guys. We're going to take a look at this new template here from the ashes. Um, so I want to start out. I did something a little different with this template. I've actually included a Nick recipe that I use to give my composites and things uh, this gritty texture. Um, the one difference why I wanted to include this one is because it's kind of a what I would call a clean grit. Um, so in other words, it doesn't muddle up the skin tones and things too much, but it does bring out that detail and give that sharpness and things like that that, that I personally really like. Uh, so to start out, let's get let's get that recipe and our action loaded up to run that. Uh, you will need to make sure that you do have the Nick software installed. Color Effects Pro 4 is what's being used. Um, and I'll put a link on the product page uh, where you can get that. So to start out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Uh, I'm going to drop down to our background layer here because we want to go into our Nick filter first and get our recipe loaded. Um, so we do need to be on a uh, editable layer for that. So we're going to go to filter. I'm going to go down here to our Nick collection and select Color Effects Pro 4. So give this a second to load up. And so typically when this loads up, you're going to see it load um, from this point here where you kind of have a list of all of the different filters that they have available. What we want to do is we want to drop down here to this tab that says recipes. And so what these are, they have some pre-built ones and things in here, but this is like a collection of filters uh, all combined to create an effect. So once we're at the recipe tab, what we're going to do is click back here. And then at the bottom of this panel, we want to click import. So from import here, we want to browse out to the, uh, the files that you downloaded. It should be a zip file you extracted. It's going to have uh, four different files in there. And the file we're looking for is this one that says jhpcleangrit.np. So we're going to select this file, open it, and we're going to see it's going to load it into our uh, imported recipes here. Once it's imported, we can actually just cancel out of this for now. Uh, because the next thing we want to do is get our action loaded up as well. So let's go over to Window, View Our Actions. So we're going to click on our menu bar here for the actions. Uh, we're going to Load Actions. And again, you're going to browse to those files you downloaded, and we're going to select the clean, clean grit action and click load here. So now you see in our action panel, we have a new folder with the clean grit action. Okay, so let's just minimize that for now. And let's take a, we'll come back to that in a second, but let's take a look at our template here. Uh, so what I like to do to kind of start out, off with is I'm going to turn off the color grading layers. Uh, let's turn these off for now. We'll turn this darken off. And let's turn the foreground layers off. So this kind of gives us our background here. So kind of just a base where we would start as we bring our subject in. Um, so to take a look at the template quickly here, we have uh, this little atmospheric smoke uh, layer here. That just kind of changed the blending of the background. Uh, so a different look there if you want a little bit of brighter background or more blended, there's the option. We do have a layer in here to modify the background color. And so this is just a solid color layer set to a color blend mode. So you can see if we just double click on the thumbnail, we can actually pick any color we want. You know, and so what I would recommend is if you find a color that you like and you want to kind of create this uh, whole color theme through this template, is once you find the one that you like, let's say maybe we like this uh, kind of blue tone here, is come down here and copy this number out. So once we copy this, we can then go to, we can see we have three other color layers here. I would just go to each one of these and paste that in, and we're going to make sure that we match these up exactly. Okay, so let's get that one, we'll paste this in, go here, paste this in. So now we know if we want to turn these things on, these are all going to match. Okay, for now, let's just turn it off to take a look at the template as it is. Uh, another thing that we have here is some optional text right here. So if we turn this on, uh, we can see. I've got it labeled here as a secondary and a main text. You know, it could be first name, last name. It could be a team name and a year. You know, it could be whatever you want. You could copy this text and add new text if you like. Um, you know, changing it is as simple as you know, clicking on the thumbnail here and and retyping whatever you'd like it to be. There's a couple texture options uh, included here. So one is a a gradient on that text. Uh, one is this. Uh, it's a couple different metallic patterns but you can turn those off and on and kind of create a different look that you like. You could even go with just more of like a, a, a plain solid color text. So whatever you like there. Uh, there is an option here to add a color cast to uh, this metallic pattern. 
Um, so this is a hue saturation layer. Um, so this one you come in and just adjust your HSL uh, sliders on this to uh, whatever tone that you like. You could change the saturation, you could change the brightness. So again, however you like the look of that. I'm just going to disable this one for now. And then with text turned on, we have a this group here called text blending. So what this is, is it's actually just a couple little smoky pieces that I like to be able to move around and kind of, I like to actually cover the, the outside corners of the text just to make it feel like there's some atmosphere kind of wrapping, wrapping around and, and working that into the background a little bit. So that's what uh, that group is there. And we have some color attached to those because if we wanted to color the entire background, then we could color that smoke as well and get everything to blend. So that's what that's what's going on there. So let's turn our color back off. So let's bring a subject in. We have our group here, place subject in this group. So I'm going to expand it. I'm going to click on the player layer. And let's just go drag, drag a subject in here like this. So we'll drop him in. Let me uh, do a resize here. So I kind of like something like that. So you'll no take notice right off the bat, because the, the, he's in this group that has a, uh, a, a, a mask on it, sorry. <laughs> uh, we've, we've done some blending on this mask so that your subject automatically has some blending applied. So we get this fading out. It looks like they're already being worked into the background. But to help push that more, we have some foreground layers here. So these foreground smoke layers, if we turn these on, you'll take notice there's actually four layers in this group. So one is kind of this uh, more hazy type of smoky layer, which is going to cover our subject and blend them more. We have a thick foreground smoke layer, which is going to match more of the look of this background smoke. We have a couple subject blending layers, that, and these work the exact same way as our text blending. They're just a couple of independent smoky layers um, so we can move around and help create some atmosphere around our subject to help blend them in. Okay, so that's what those are about. And again, those can be colored to match your theme as well. Then we have this darkened drama layer here. And so what this is, if we turn it on, we'll see it'll bring all of the, the brightness down and give us a lot of uh, contrast and pop there. But one thing I like to pay attention of is I don't necessarily want that to show up on the subject too much. So all we need to do is on our mask is switch over to our brush. I'm going to switch it to a black brush. I'm going to make sure that the hardness is at zero so it's a nice soft edge. And then with a low flow I'm just going to come in I'm going to paint this away kind of from like upper body and face here of our subject. Okay so that kind of opens him back up and just allows that effect to hit the rest of the background. So then we have a universal highlight glow here. So again, if we were using a color theme, we would turn this on and it will it'll create this color cast on all of the highlights. You could use it without the colors. You know, the good thing I like about the flexibility of the layers is you kind of pick and choose, you know, what you like, the opacities that you like. You know, maybe you just wanted to add a little bit of a blue glow in there. You could definitely do that or you could change it. So a couple more options here. We have our facial highlight boost and we have one and two. So one has got a little bit of a yellowish color cast on it. And what these layers are for is to just bring out some of the highlights on the face. Um, so if we bring our brush down, I'll switch over to a white brush. Let's bring our flow up a little. If I paint on this, you're not going to see a huge change. But if I turn this on and off, you'll see how those highlights on the face just pop out a little bit. Okay, and that's all that, that I'm looking to do with that. And then there's a second one. If you wanted to bring them out more, this one's set to white. It'll be a little bit brighter even. You know, and that's just going to pop them even more. And the reason I like to do that is because when we turn our color grading on, we don't want it to flatten out the highlights on the face too much. So these allow the face to kind of still pop out and bring us the detail back into the face that we want to have there. So then finally we have our color grading layers. Uh, if we expand this group, we can see we have three different layers. I highly recommend that you tweak these layers and their opacities based on the look that you're after. Uh, you know, based on the color of their uniforms, um, just the look in general, you know, play with these opacities and come in and create a look that is exactly what you want. 
Okay, so opacity sliders are hugely beneficial for those. So you can see, pretty easy to just drop them in and, and blend right away. Once you get the look and everything set that you like, now we can we can talk about that grittiness again. If we wanted to add some of that grit, all we need to do at this point, since we have our recipe and our action loaded, is head over to our actions here. I'm going to make sure the top layer is selected, and then I'm going to run our clean grit action here. So let's click play. It's going to take a second. It's going to run and apply that recipe that we loaded up. And so that gives us this type of gritty effect. Okay, so you really see the detail that it brings out into the smoke and the jersey and, and all these little areas. And so I really like that look. But what I, what I really like is that it doesn't make the image muddy. Okay, it doesn't muddy up the skin tones. And so I really like the look that gives. And again, you can play with opacity to make it as strong or as subtle as you want. You know, sometimes you can just do a little subtle effect that really goes a long way as well. So I hope you guys find that useful. I uh, hope you get a ton of use out of this, and I will talk to you soon.